Hello and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever, whenever you're watching this, welcome. This week we're going to be continuing with our testimony series and we are joined wonderfully by Karen Bates. Karen is a member of Union Baptist Church. She's involved in the youth and children's work at Union Baptist, but she's got so much more to share than that. And I'm really excited to hear what she has to share about her faith journey, her story with us. So let's hand straight over to Karen. Hi, just going to do, uh, try and tell you my testimony. It's quite a long story because I'm quite old, so it started a long time ago. I grew up in a non-Christian family. My mum and dad had no faith. We didn't go to church. God was not a part of our lives at all. However, unknown to me, he had a plan for me. One of my school friends, she grew up in a Christian family and her dad was a lay preacher. And he persuaded me, bullied me, badgered me, whatever, to go to church with him one Sunday. So I went, and I went again and again. And eventually, at the age of 16, I gave my life to God. I accepted Jesus as my saviour. And on that Easter Sunday, I think it was 1973, I was baptised. It was quite spectacular. What a change in my life. I had, first of all, I had meaning and purpose now in a way I'd never had before. And particularly as at that time, my parents were getting divorced. So there was lots and lots of pressure on. But to know that I had a loving Heavenly Father who was going to look after me really helped me get through all that. I went off to train as a teacher. Um, I went to a Church of England teach training college. They don't exist anymore, teach training colleges. Um, but we had a lovely chaplain and our own chapel on site and a Christian union. And I got involved in so many different things and I met so many lovely people. And my relationship with God really thrived and I grew as a young Christian. And then I got my first teaching job and things kind of unraveled a bit. I'd never found a new church to go to. I lost my way. Things got muddled. And not surprisingly, I started making decisions that were not good ones. I wasn't a bad person, but I made bad choices. Jumping forward a few years, I ended up in High Wycombe. I came here for work. Uh, and then I met Ian, my husband, and... We had two children, Stephen and Rosie. And I think having them really prompted me to think about my life and the purpose and what was I doing? What was I trying to achieve? And coincidentally at that time, I met somebody called Jan Saunders. She goes to Wickham Marsh Baptist. And uh, she delighted in nagging me in the nicest possible way to get back to church. And then in January, I think it was a 2001, I plucked up the courage. That might sound a strange thing for a grown up to say, but I was really overwhelmed by the idea, even though I wanted to do it. But I plucked up the courage one Sunday and I brought the children down to Union Baptist for a first morning service that we'd ever been to. I was really, really nervous. But when I got inside, I was absolutely amazed to discover there were four people in the congregation that I already knew. One was Ron Morecambe. I'd known him since I'd been a teenager. Him and his wife used to open their house on a Sunday evening for the young people from our church to go and congregate and chat and to read the Bible and to pray together. Then there was Doss Maudsley. She was another maths teacher and I'd worked with her in her classroom a few years earlier. And there was Jane Weston, who I'd met in my, as I'd just started teaching at Hatters Lane, made friends with her. And there was Ron Gutteridge, who was an English teacher at the time and we'd worked together at Holmer Green Senior School many years before. And it just felt as if God was saying, 
this is where you're supposed to be. So sort yourself out. So I did. I started coming every Sunday morning with the children. And a service, I don't know when it was, a year later maybe, I can't remember. People in the congregation were invited to come forward to, to recommit their lives to Christ. And before I knew where I was, my legs had taken me up the front. Heart beating like a mad thing. But it was exactly the right decision. And I renewed my commitment to Jesus. I can't say that life's dead easy when you do that. But different things happen. And instead of walking alone and making bad choices because there's no one to guide you, you've always got guidance. You've always got comfort. If you light a fire, whether you've got coals or whether you've got wood, and you pick a piece of the coal or the wood out of the fire and you put it to one side, eventually it'll go cold and go out. And that was kind of what happened to me. It is important to be part of, the, of God's family, part of the church or a home group or a Christian union. By being together in God's presence, we help each other and we support each other. So that's kind of a message for you guys. But the other message I, perhaps is the people in your life. So my friend's dad, Peter his name was, and Jan Saunders, and those four people who had no idea of their importance on that day I first came to Union. God puts people in our lives for a reason, and we can learn from them, and their very presence there can help to guide us and help to challenge us and to prompt us. Anyway, I hope that's given you a little bit of an insight into me. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Thank you, Karen, for sharing so openly and so honestly with us today about your story. What a wonderful image that was of when you take the coal or the wood out of the fire and set it aside and it goes cold. I could really picture that image in my head. It's so important that we stay in community, that we stay in with that fire, with the people that God has placed around us. And I know throughout this time of Lockdown, that has been really difficult, not being able to see one another, not being able to be in this community that we want to be in. But as restrictions are eased and as we're getting back to a kind of normal, I really want to encourage you to just sensibly and safely get in touch with those people, be a part of that community. Don't take for granted the people that God has placed in your life because we need that. We need that that relationship to keep us going, to keep us burning. And God's placed those people in our lives for, for a reason. So thank you, Karen, for sharing that. That's such a huge encouragement to, I think, many of us right now. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for Karen. Thank you for her story. Thank you for the way that she shared it so softly and so openly and so so well put, Lord. Thank you for that image, for that picture of the, the hot stone, the hot coal and the wood. Lord, thank you that you place us all in community. You place us all in friendship groups or gatherings that you know feed us, that you know are good for us, Lord. And Lord, we know it's been a difficult time. We know it's not been easy with everything that's been going on. But Lord, thank you that you are still placing people around us. Thank you that you are still placing the people in our lives that you know are good for us. Lord, I just pray that as we come out of lockdown, as we go into this new stage, that we would be able to meet again with those people, that we would be able to be refreshed and we would be able to come alive again through the power of your Holy Spirit and the power of the people that you place around us. Thank you, Lord, for such an amazing truth. Amen. Thank you guys for joining. Please make the most of this video and some of our past videos that you will find on the website. There is not going to be a new video next week. Um, we're gonna take a week out 
because there's so much going on. I'm actually moving, so that's another exciting bit of news. Um, moving house, not moving church. <laughs> um, and we are just going to take a break for a week. So make the most of all of the videos that we've put up online. There are some brilliant ones on there by some brilliant people. So yeah, please do make the most of them. And until we next speak, stay safe and God bless. Goodbye. Thank you.